Thank you guys for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like my content, leave a comment down below. Ask me questions, let me know what you liked about it. And hey, click on the little like button. But please, if you want, go ahead and subscribe because it helps my channel out. That way you can stay up to date with all my videos. And if you want, click on the bell icon to get notified. Right? Right? Huh? One out of two. Not bad. Oh guys, it's a Simba video. I'm gonna talk about the importance of taking your pet lizard outside and how to do it safely, which is really the important thing. Simba, could you stay in frame? Could you stay in frame? So, you guys may know if you've watched some of my other videos before, you do see videos of sometimes my monitors outside not on a harness and leash setup. And that is why I do do that sometimes. But just know, guys, I am in a very controlled environment even when I'm outside. I live in a very quiet subdivision. I go out in non-peak hours at non-peak times. And I am still very vigilant on my lizard's body language and on things going on around him. Luckily, I don't have any entrances to my street that are near me they, I, since I live in the middle. So, But if I see cars coming down the street, things like that, I always get a hold of my lizard because I know that my lizard's not going to be spooked by me. It's not have to worry about be spooking it by you guys, but a car, a plane, something with a loud noise could make your lizard get scared and just take off running. And the worst thing you want to happen is have them run right into the street and get hit by a car. So how do we do this safely? I want to go out in peak times now. Step-in harnesses. I can't talk about enough how step-in harnesses are the best. This is an extra small. I use it for Simba, but you guys can measure for these. You measure around the widest part of where the step-in harness will go. You get that in inches or centimeters, and then your step-in harnesses will have a range because you will be able to adjust. This harness is a, would be a little bit big for Simba, but when it comes, this second tie is actually still zip-tied, so I get to keep it a little bit tighter, which is nice. And it gets on good because you don't want a harness where they can slide out backwards. So these harnesses work really easy. Their two feet go in here. This goes underneath the, in between the arms. These wrap up. It, it snaps like that. And then you have two rings. So again, we're looking for failure points, right? You have two rings where the leash will go. So not only is the step-in harness um, held by the plastic clip, but then also the two metal rings are held together by the clamp on the leash. So again, we just got more protection. Let's get Simba in this. Can I do this with one hand? That's going to be a great question. Ah, Simba. This is going to be Simba's first time outside this year. 75 degrees outside here in Michigan. It's cloudy 75, so I'll like that because my head won't burn. There we go. There's one arm. Nice and done. Simba's like, what the heck is this thing? It's been a while. But Simba's back in... Okay, we couldn't do it one-handed, but we did it two-handed. It's so easy two-handed. So there you go. Simba is attached, and we'll attach the leash right there. I like attaching the leash before we go outside. That way... Simba, if I set him down, I try to put this on outside, he can't run around like crazy, right? So clip one, clip two, and we have two points of this thing separating. Here, if that plastic were to break, and then two metal, even if this one were to break, it's in this one, we're good. Simba, we're going outside. Excellent. We're heading outside here. And let's keep in mind, so Simba hasn't been outside. I don't remember the exact last day, but it's been a full five months at least, possibly six months. We're here in April now, so I'm going to put him down. There's some type of behavior. Let's not be shocked if we see it. He might run. He might get very defensive. We're not sure what we're going to experience, but all of that would be considered normal, or he might not care at all. Oh. He's being very clingy right now. Okay. And I am actually going to sit next to him. And this is an important thing. Because if he is afraid, 
it wouldn't be bad if he ran to us. Sonny, I want to stay out of his sun. The sun's coming over from our left here right now, so I'll stay on his right for right now, but I'll always stay on that side, um, which is a very, I just want to make sure I don't want to mess with his third eye. I don't want the shadows to go. A car just went by. Uh, and I want to stay down close to him because if he gets scared like he is now, he could come to me for some assurance. Hey, everything's going to be all right. And it's funny because, you know, if you looked last year, he was very comfortable with being outside. He was no big deal. He didn't care. We have to get that back into him because it's been, you know, five to six months. He hasn't experienced this. Lots of smells. The tongue moving around would be normal. The, you know, things like that. And hopefully we can get some exercise, get him normalized with the smell, burn off some of that winter fat, all of those things. Right? Yes, all of those things, right. Now, normally, when I come outside with Simba, I would bring my his chew ball outside with him almost all the time. Look at that, he's focusing on that car that just went by, it made noise, he's checking it out. The wind is blowing. But I don't want that to take place in this time. I want him to just get used to the noises, the smells, the feel. The wind is blowing. You'll see the grass moving. It is a slightly cool breeze. Like I said, it's 75, 76. Perfect safe temperature for him to be outside right now. It's not cold and we're not going to be outside long. Maybe 10, 15 minutes, depending on how he acts. Uh, hi. Hi, yep. And this is normal behavior. He's smelling a few things, and then he's coming to me to check out, hey, is everything still okay? Yeah, everything's okay. Hello. Oh, no, he's climbing. I figured he would do this. Uh, sometimes they'll do this, guys, because it's like a baby that wants to be held, right? He gets a little scared, and he just wants to be up on top of you because you're that constant, you're that safe. So, he acts like a baby except he's a lot bigger and he's not a baby that's the problem all right boy let's walk around i'm gonna stand up and we're gonna let him walk so here's simba you know he's always been super curious here we go he's now exploring he's you know checking things out let's see what he does we're gonna get some some live action footage Hopefully he doesn't just follow me. Crikey. Come on. Do something. Very fascinating. <laughs> Although, guys, you may think, if you're on the outside looking in, if you haven't followed my channel, if you don't know a lot about reptiles, you don't know how good this is actually for... The lizard right now and how involved he is look at his tongue moving like it is this is some in crazy mental enrichment for him he is getting his whole mental exercise he's smelling everything not only is he tasting what's on the grass remember i don't fertilize could be animal scents rabbits squirrels birds all of the above chipmunks right but also, as the wind is blowing, the different scents that are blowing through the air. Remember, his forked tongue, he puts that out. He gets those scents on the tips of his tongue. He pulls that tongue back into his mouth. He rubs his tongue on the top of his mouth where his Jacobson organs are. That is how they smell. And he smells that. Yes, he's got two nostrils. They're reverse-facing nostrils. Those are only there for breathing. And they're reverse because when he's digging, he as he's shoving his head into the hole, he's not packing dirt and sand into his nostrils. Very the way that they are. So, you know, the way they've evolved and all of that is just so fascinating. But yeah, he's walking around. This is good. He's got good weight. He's carrying himself really good. These are things to look for. So when you want to know if you have an overweight monitor, what are things we're looking for? We're looking for these things when the monitor walks. We want to make sure that when a monitor walks that there's no problems. When he moves his front right foot, his back left leg should move. When he moves his front left, his back right should move, right? It's, it's the other side and they want to move together. He's walking towards me, which makes it so hard. We also want to make sure when Simba walks, if he stops following me, 
and we want to make sure that his belly is not rubbing, which it's not, and that he stands up tall on all of his legs, and he just walks. Now, he will have a different walk if there was something he was trying to sneak up with. He will get low like a cat, right? They will get low, he will slither. If there's something he wants to run fast or look big and tall for, he will stand up and he will fill all of the cavities in his lungs like a bird, right? These guys have really close to bird uh, breathing setups, which is really cool. He will fill all of those and he will look very tall and very fat, but thin, uh, wide and thin, I should say. So, but we are not gonna cross the street and poop on our neighbor's lawn. That is not what we're going to do. Ooh, it's getting windy here. I don't have a wind sock. I don't want us to get blown over. So again, this breeze is going, guys. You probably hear it. It's actually a warm breeze, so it's all okay. He's not cold. He's all good. It is It is nice and uh, cloudy. I mean, the sun is still bright coming through the clouds, but uh, we got a nice little layer. I don't have to get burned in two seconds from being outside. Oh, oh, he's smelling something. If we get lucky, we could see him taking a huge crap. I know everyone's really into that because big lizards like this um, tend to do that, and, and maybe he will. He's Oh, he absolutely will. There it goes. Amazing. Uh, well, that's good fertilizer. What do we have here? A lot of urate and a lot of fully digested feces. That's great. Very good. Very good, Simba. You feel lighter now? Should we get moving? Everyone is, uh, everyone was hoping you do that because you tend to do that. That's also one nice thing of bringing the monitors outside is you get them moving, you get them walking, their GI tract starts moving, and they typically poop which is great. I just have to make sure Tortellini doesn't come out over here. Don't don't go over there by there, Simba, because Tortellini will try to eat that in two seconds. Oh, Simba, I think we've done enough. We're going to sign off. We're going to sign off, all right? Can you can you please? I know, don't you don't need to focus on what you've done over there, for God's sakes. Don't be one of those guys who's like, look what I just did. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It always ends with Simba taking a huge dump when he's outside. Take care. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.